بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد سو ان شاء اللہ وی ہیو کمپلیٹڈ دا دا نظم آف بیقونیہ اینڈ وی ہیو ا بیف ہیڈ ا بریف انٹروڈکشن ٹو سم آف دا بیسک مصطلح سم بیسک ٹرمینالوجیز آف حدیث ناؤ موونگ آن ٹو ا مور لائک ا اسٹینڈرڈ ٹیکس وچ ہیز بیکاز ان بیقونیہ کوائٹ ا فیو تھنگز ار مسنگ So those things that are missing, those, they will be covered. And inshallah, we'll also do some practice as you go along, inshallah. So before we go into the book, a few things about the book, about the author, about our way of teaching, inshallah. So the book is called Nukhbatul Fikari. Nukhbatul Fikari Fi Mustalahati Ahlil Athari. So the, the first part is the main part, Nukhbatul Fikar. Sometimes simply referred to as Nukhba for short. But the name of the book is Nukhbatul Fikari. So Nukhba is ma yuntakhabu wa yukhtar. It's a usmul maf'ul meaning of intakhaba, meaning chosen. So it's a chosen, selected. And fikrun is singular, the plural is fikr, which means here thoughts and ideas. So Nukhbatul fikr. This is uh, like a, a selection of thoughts and ideas and concepts and brainstorming regarding fi mustalahat. Mustalahat is terms, terminologies of ahlil athari. So athar is, see the word hadith is, is the common term, but you also use the word athar. Inshallah, when we start off the book, we'll go through it in detail. So there are different words used for, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi statement. Some use hadith, plural ahadith. Some people use khabar, plural akhbar. Some people use athar, plural athar. So these different words are used for hadith. Not only the one word hadith. These three words are, are common. And these three words are used to express the meaning of what we know as hadith. And we discuss which people, whom, who uses which, which term. And what do they each mean? And what, what differences, inshallah, later on. But the main thing is, the name of the book is Nukhbatul Fikari. It can be shortened to Nukhba. But remember, it's not, some people say fik, it's not Fikr, it's Fikar. Okay? And, the, and this is regarding the terms of the Ahlul Athar. Ahlul Athar means the people of the Hadith. So the books of Hadith and the, the ulama of Hadith, when they uh, speak, what do they mean by this? Okay? It's like when we're studying any subject, you have to know, okay, well, for example, the word Qalb. So what does the word Qalb mean in Tasawwuf or, or Ilmu Tazkiyah? Uh, what does qalb mean in nahu? What does qalb mean in balagha? What does qalb mean in sarf? So every, every, every science, they have their, um, every science has their um, specific terminologies. So we have to become aware of those terminologies. So when we read these terms in their books, we'll be understanding what they're talking about. Now the, the author, his name is Ahmad ibn Ali. That's his name, but he's commonly known as Ibn Hajar. That's his, that's his, uh, his, his that's why he's known as Ibn Hajar. If it's Ahmad ibn Ali, not really known by that. He's known as Ibn Hajar. So Ahmad, his father is Ali, and his name is his grandfather's name is Hajar, and he's known as Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. So Asqalani is where his uh, forefathers were from. Obviously, you only become known by that name when you leave that city. I'll explain later, inshallah. And Al Shafi'i, his 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 maslak, his uh, his uh, madhab. He was born in seven seven three and passed away in two two five two eight. Sorry, eight five two. Now it's important to know when you're studying ulama and you're studying these books, to the dates of the ulama. So you got you got an idea, okay? Like Imam Muslim, how early he was. When Imam Muslim he mentions about hadith and ilal and illa of hadith, what's he talking about? How early he is? Imam Tirmidhi, how early he is? He's like 250, 300, or before 300 Hijri, 270s, and it's like what almost like 500 years later, on, or 400, 600 years later on. So you get an idea of where each group stands and where they where they are. So he was in what, 852. So dates of death are very important. Okay, so he's 852. So he's quite, quite, you can say quite late for this science. Like one of the, quite late for the science. So as I said before, you're only known as, you only attribute to that name when you leave that place. For example, if you all live in Leicester, and you call you Leicester, he's like, what's the point of calling Leicester? You're all in Leicester anyways. If you leave Leicester and go somewhere else, then you go, oh, the one from Leicester. If you move to London, you say, oh, the one from Leicester. For example, if you go to India, in Mardisa, Anybody from England in Mardisa is called Londoni. Because now they've left their place, so now they're actually the place where they left. So nobody, so his Asqalan is actually a place in uh, previous sh uh, Sham, f Palestine. Palestine. So it's Asqalan. So it's just around here, above Gaza. So his parents, or his forefathers from there, but he, he was born in uh, Qahira, in Cairo. Uh, his, 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 uh, his, his, his uh, Mazar, his... Uh, his grave may be there as well. You can probably go and, uh, it's probably available. You can see pictures on the internet. And those of you there can probably see it as well. Okay? Now, he passed away when... His father passed away when he was four years old. So he grew up 
as a yatim. Okay, so and you go as a yatim. He memorized the Quran by the age of nine. So it's quite you know, at the age of nine he memorized the Quran. And he also memorized some like like usul, some fundamental books, like main main books. The Mukhtasar of Ibn Hajib in Usul fiqh He also memorized the Alfiya of Iraqi. So I said Alfiya, I mentioned this before as well. The Alfiya is a thousand, roughly a thousand poems regarding a particular science. So Allama Iraqi rahimahullah in Ulum al Hadith wrote a thousand poems, a thousand lines, not a thousand poems, a thousand lines. Sometimes they get a bit more, a bit less. And it's called the Alfiya of Iraqi. So he memorized that and probably studied it as well. So at a very young age, he memorized these things. His teachers was Zainuddin al-Iraqi, so he, he studied by him. So he passed away in 806, so which means in a very young age, he benefited from his, from his teacher, Zainuddin. Uh, he's got more teachers, I'm going to mention the, the common ones or interesting ones, so you can keep in mind. So Zainuddin al-Iraqi, when you say the name Iraqi in hadith, this refers to his, Ibn Hajar's teacher. Another common one is Nuruddin al-Haythami. Nuruddin al-Haythami. Um, this is important because this name, Majma'u al-Zawaid, this is an, a famous book in hadith, meaning you have, like, it's like not the, the Asanid hadith, like the Qutb al-Sitta and those, it's more, it's more Kitab al-Takhrij, where uh, he's taken like all the hadith from different books, and look, this is on the, so for example, this is all, so a zawa'id is basically when you take out a hadith, which are not in another book. So for example, say the zawa'id, for example, the zawa'id of the Majah is those hadith in the Majah which are not in the other books. So he's got a good compilation which, Compiles a lot of the books. Is, I'll explain another time, inshallah, when we do hadith. The level, but he's also important, though. Like Nuruddin al Haythami. The name Al Bul. Again, it's a lot of, it's only giving you a few names. It's good to know these, get familiar, because obviously now we've been doing it very basic. Now we can get a second level. So introduce a few names so that you get familiar. You hear these names over and over again. So just remember, Iraq is a very common one. If you can't remember the two, I just remember the first one, Iraqi. Zainuddin Iraqi, Rahimahumullah. Have Bulqini, Ibn Munakkin. You'll hear these names. So I just say, it starts ringing a bell. The more you hear it, the more you get familiar with it. Okay, and he's got two, two, three female teachers. What he studied by them and what he learned by them, I don't know how much he learned. I don't know, but it's interesting. He got Maria bint Al Azra'i and Fatima and Aisha bint Muhammad ibn Abdul Hadi. So these are three female teachers that uh, Nuruddin Itr mentioned in his biography. That these are his three, 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 three female teachers. I don't know which book he studied by them or age he studied by them. But it's interesting. You can do it later if you want, inshallah. Okay, now. Ibn Hajar, so I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know the, like his, his status to that because you know, we need to become aware of his, his In Ilm al Hadith, he's like, you know, not the earlier like, Muhaddithun, like you have Bukhari, Muslim, and those guys, those are, but the later Muhaddithun, he's like one of the, like, you know, everything, you can't have a discussion about Hadith without having no, no what he says or his books or his terminologies or his opinion. So one of his main, main contributions to the Ummah is Fathul Bari. And Fathul Bari is a Sharaf Sahih al Bukhari. So it's volume is very big and it's one of his you know, great works. Um, I think his student, Allama Sahawi, he used to say that Imam Bukhari done a great, a great favor on the Ummah by collecting these Sahih Ahadith and presenting it towards us. And this was like a debt, and like, you know, you, I owe you kind of thing. The Ummah owed Imam Bukhari. And his, he, was, he used to say, obviously out of love of his Shaykh, but it is, it is true, the Fatul Bari, you can't teach Bukhari without knowing Fatul Bari. Like, you know, you have, okay, different options, okay, this shara, this shara, what I use. Everybody has to use Fatul Bari, that's how like, you know, good it is, like, that's standard, you have to use that one. There's no mafar, there's no escape from this one. So this is one of his masterpieces. Okay? So you see that by writing Fatul Bari, my teacher has fulfilled the obligation to some extent of that Imam, that we owe Imam Bukhari. We kind of, semi, the Ummah has semi-repaid Imam Bukhari. So this is a really masterpiece, it's got different variations. One of, the, one of the key works. Another of his works is Lisan al-Mizan. So Lisan al-Mizan, so basically, again, again, there's a lot of information, but just try to get as much as you can. You need to get familiar now with these books. So what happens, as we mentioned before, we have what? Rawi Thiqa, Rawi is Khafif uh, al the Rawi is Da'if, Majhul, Mubham, he's what? He's Muttaham bil Kadib, he lies. So how do you know all of this? Then the earliest scholars compile this information. And they, they, kind, they kind of then what? They compile this information and they form biographies, etc. So one of one of the one of the books of biography is called Mizan al Atidal fi Naqd al Rijal. Yes, Alama Dhabi rahimahullah, which is before him. He never met Dhabi, but just that century, this book was very written. So Alama Dhabi wrote a book called Mizan al Atidal fi Naqd al Rijal. So in this book, he's got the weak ahadith, not a weak ahadith, weak narrators. But this is very long. I don't know if I've got a picture of it here. It's very long. Okay, so it's specifically about Kitabul Majruhin. 
So what happened was this was Lisanul Mizan. That's Allah that's, that's Dhabis. So that's, that's sorry, that's Allah um, Dhabis is Mizan Atidal. But Imam Bukhari and not Imam Bukhari, Ibn Hajar Rahimahullah, he summarizes Lisanul Mizan, make it like abridged. Yes? It's like a, a, a kind of like summarize it, added a few things. So this is one of the book on narrators and ruwat. So this is common or uh, very commonly used when we uh, doing uh, when you're referring back to the narrators. Obviously, because in the Kutub Sita, you will not find many from there, Lisan al Mizan, because a lot of them, most of them are not from the Majruhi. Well, a lot of them are not from Majruhin. So it's two, two famous works of so what? Fatul Bari, you have to know that Fatul Bari, this is one of the major works of Imam, Bukh, of Imam Ibn Hajar, Rahimahullah, and Lisan al Mizan. And along with this, you've got another few other books about Ruwat, about narrators. One is called Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb. What's Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb? It's a Tahdeeb of Tahdeeb. So again, how do you understand this? So originally, there's a book called Al Kamal fi Asma'il Rijal by Abdul Ghani Al Maqdisi. So quite a long book. Okay? So it's called Al Kamal fi Asma'il Rijal. So this is the original book. Then again, this is too big, very voluminous. Like, they put lots of details inside of it. So, like, for example, like, they, they, in the earlier books, they wouldn't just say, oh, he's thiqa, he's khafif al he's. They would quote everybody who said this about him. Okay? And then. Later, I said, well, okay, let me just, instead of having to read like 20 opinions, like a whole biography about him, I'll just tell you a summary about him. Okay? And then after that, what happened was, Tahzeeb al-Kamal came about. So, Tahzeeb al-Kamal is by al-Mizzi, rahimahullah. So, what happened was, uh, al-Mizzi, rahimahullah, he, he took the Kamal of Asma al-Rijal, and he just got the narrative in the six books of Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, uh, Sunan Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Nasa'i, and Ibn Majah. He got those books and the narrators from there he extracted from the main book. Do you understand? And that's one of the reasons the six books of Hadith became very famous. Because now it's very easy to refer back to. If you want to find the narrators, it's all in Tahzeeb al-Kamal. So the narrators of the six books of Hadith are all in this book. Allama Mizzi's Tahzeeb al-Kamal. Are you following? But again, this had this got the so then Ibn Hajar Rahimullah, he came along and he then Tahzeeb al-Tahzeeb. He then? Tahdhib al-Tahdhib, meaning Tahdhib al-Hadhab al-Hadhib al to refine. So then he wrote this book, Tahdhib al-Tahdhib. So these are books, this is, so when we say Khafif al-Dhab, Qawi, Thiqa, he's not weak, it comes from all of these books, these biographies. So you can look, go back to these books if you're searching for, like when we do practice on Hadith, how do you know this person, what's his status? We look in these kind of books. And then this is also a bit, this is in, this is in four volumes, you've got this copy here, four volumes. Then he then called Taqdhib al-Tahdhib. So this basically, he went and he kind of abridged that even further. Okay? It's a tahdeeb with tahdeeb. Okay? So, just an interesting point here. And the books I mentioned to you, Ibn Hajar Rahmatullah, the way he said, he said later on, obviously, it's, it's a bit of humility in it as well. And by, I mean, this is by his standard. He said that I wrote many books, but the books I mentioned to you, he's got one, two more others. He said about six books. These are the books that I really like, that I wrote. Fatul Bari, the, um, the Lisan, the, the uh, Fatul Bari, which one is it? The Fatul Bari. Then the uh, Lisan al Mizan, these two, the Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb, and uh, Nukhba. These are the books that I wrote that I really like. Okay, these are good pieces. The other one I wrote when I was younger, it's not as good, and I didn't get a chance to read. So, by his standard, which is probably very beneficial for us still, but by his standard, he, he mentioned these books specifically. I like these books. So these are the ones I've done, and I'm happy with the, the work that I've done on these. The other ones, he is not to his standard. That's what he's saying. But it's still obviously very useful. I'm not saying it's not good, but according to his high standards, he was saying that. And that happens in life, you know. As you go on, you get better, you learn more things, and you think, oh, well, I could have done it better. And like any, any person's work, the first works and the later works, obviously, there is a very big difference. Anyways, so the book we're doing is called what? Nukh Batul Fikr, written by Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, who is a Shafi scholar, and some of his major works are Ibn ha is the commentary on, Fathul, on Bukhari, on Fathul Bari, and he's got Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb, the Mizan, Lisan uh, al Mizan. Now, this book that we're doing has many commentaries. It's like so like standard. It's like in Nahwa, everybody in the subcontinent has Nahwa. Everybody in the Arab world is Qatun Nada, everybody is Alfiya Nimar. There's so many commentaries on the Nukhbat al Fikr. Like I can give you like, 20 of them, but there's no point. Right? As you, if you want to buy any of them and you go in a bookshop, you'll see you can get familiar with them. I'll just give you one thing that Ibn Hajar himself wrote a commentary. We have is a very it's about six, seven pages maybe. So it's not too long, it's, it's a brief text. And I said that was that was the style before. You either write a very small booklet, very easy to transcribe. Or you write up another, you can learn by heart. So it's not another, not a poem, it's a text. And it's very short. And then he himself then wrote a commentary on it. This is called Sharhun Nukhba. Or it's called Nuzhatun Nadar. Nuzhatun Nadar. Nuzha, like a holiday or like a stroll. 
Another is basically viewing, pondering. It's called Nusratul Nazar fi Tawdihi Nukhbatil Fikr. So he himself wrote Ashara. So you can look, you can get that. And other people have written other commentaries. There's so many of them. So it's standard. So you get like hundreds and thousands written. Hundreds are available, like standard. Even people are using nowadays. And probably so many are no longer in print. But this is one of them I'm going to mention. I can mention loads of them, but it's difficult. So, so just a brief summary again. We have Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah. He was in the, is in the 8th century. He wrote, uh, his teachers, one of his main teachers was what? Allama Iraqi, rahimahullah. And his main books, he's a, he's a great scholar of hadith. He's, he's known, his specialty is in hadith. He's got a few other books as well, but his main specialty is in hadith. And his greatest works are the works in hadith, especially the Sharah of Bukhari. And he's got the Sharah on this little booklet as well. And um, yes, and as you get more familiar, you've got a brief idea, you get more familiar with personality. And inshallah, I try to introduce bit by bit. So, and throughout this lesson, what we're trying to do, I'll try to expand a bit more of it in the, in, in the, in the Baykuniya. In the Baykuniya, we just went straight to the text, we didn't go into any detail. Try on a bit more detail, but if anybody's watching this video, that we're not going to go like, you know, I'm not trying to give like a, a high level lecture. I'm trying to make it easy to digest information. I'm trying to let the information as easy as possible, bite sized information, which can be digested slowly, slowly. Uh, by, so I'm just assuming that the students only has done Baykuniya. Whether we then Baykuniya, we're not going to cover that again, or we just go through that very quickly. And the new information we're going to cover in a bit more detail. Okay? And we're not going to go very, very deep, like, like, which are not, so you got beginning, you have to say, like, things like that, we're not going to go too deep into those things, but we're trying to cover the useful use of information, expanding all the Nabaiqunia. Any questions from anybody? Everybody following? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, wa nashadu la ilaha illa anta, wa nastaghfiruka, wa natubu ilayka.